Okay, hello, hello, hello. Hope everyone can hear me out there. Today we're going to talk about numerology associated with the tarot. All right, and, and a little bit of spirituality too. Okay, so let's get into it. Thank you, God, for blessing each and every person who comes to this video with uh, clarity. All right, truth, clarity from you. All right, let's see. So of course, we're going to talk about the Tarot. We're going to talk about numerology associated with the Tarot. Let's just talk about uh, the Tarot. Um, we're going to kind of stick with the major arcana. Um, if you are familiar with the Tarot, then you've heard of um, major arcana here. Um, I hope I'm spelling this right. So yeah, I, you've heard of major arcana. The major arcana are... Um, comprised of 21 cards okay so uh you've got 21 cards okay in the major arcana uh 21 21 the number 21 so in numerology it's all about reducing reducing the number so if you have a compound number you have a number that is you know comprised of more than just one number you reduce it by adding it together right so with 21 of course, we get three, all right? So um, that's going to be significant, and we're going to talk about that. But keep in mind, there are 21 major, we'll just use, uh, hang on, yeah, major arcana, MA. So we know that MA stands for major arcana, and we know that 21 equals uh, to, to three. Three is going to be significant too. Three is going to be our overarching number here. So let's just talk about that for a second. Uh, three is going to be the overarching number. The number three uh, is going to be, going to be uh, the overarching number. Can I spell arching? Um, number, <laughs> right? So three is gonna be very significant in this study. Okay. Well, I mean, this quick, um, you know, analysis of numerology and the tarot. So three is very significant. Um, let's go ahead and just kind of make reduce that a little bit, and then we'll spread that out a bit. So, uh, you can always come back to this video for your own notes. And for some of you who want to read the tarot, if you read tarot for yourself or others, this will make sense for you. And um, it'll help you read better, okay? So three is going to be the overarching number for everything, okay? We'll put it up here. Why do we say that? All right, so we'll jump back to major arcana. 21 major arcana in the tarot. There's... a uh, which 21 reduces to three. Let's talk about the major arcana. Some of us know it by heart, some of us don't. Let's go ahead and get into it. So the major arcana is a comprise of 21, right? 21 cards. And we'll go into what those cards are. Uh, the fool card, the magician. Okay, I hope I'm spelling all this right. Uh, the high priestess. We'll just do HP. Um, uh, not Hewlett Packard. <laughs> All right. Um, the emperor, empress. Okay. Um, and then we have the lovers. Okay. And of course the major arcana, uh, represent different, uh, zodiac signs, 12 zodiac signs. Okay. And we're just going to leave those seven right there. And we're going to pull up another, text box and we're going to write the next seven so we got the strength card okay and then we have the hermit as the major arcana we have the wheel of fortune so i'm talking about all right and then we have justice and then we have the hanged man or woman uh, then we have the death card and then we have temperance oh, oh we got those the same line then we got temperance and then, all right, so we'll just pull another uh, text box here and we'll write the other. So then we have the devil. Okay. And then we have the tower. And then we have the star card. That could be, this could be out of order, but I believe it's right. But if it's not, somebody will let me know, right? Um, judgment. Okay, and I could be spelling that incorrectly. World card. Okay, so we've got all of our major arcana here, of which are comprised of uh, 21 cards. 
Um, but we what what we've done here is we've broken them down into three, back to three, three being our overarching number. We've broken them down into three different groups. Okay. Three groups of what? Seven. Because we know that seven times three is 21. I don't need to write that anywhere, do I? I'll just write it just in case somebody is wanting to see it, you know. Okay, so we've got um three groups of seven major MA, major arcana. Okay. That's what we have here. We have three groups of uh the seven of seven major arcana here. So um this is gonna make sense for some people. Just just hang in there. It's all gonna tie in together. So of course three is our overarching number. We get three groups of seven. I, it, it will probably make more sense if I just type out seven right? <laughs> instead of the numbers, the word seven. Okay, so we got three groups of seven. Um Seven. Let's talk about seven. Seven being a number of perfection, mastery, and even be trickery. But seven is, of course, a lucky number, but it is perfect. Okay. So let's just talk about that for a second. So, so we've got three groups of seven. And um, we know that seven is. Seven is about perfection, mastery. Maybe even trickery, but it is definitely um, it's a perfect number. It's it's the highest account of. And then you go into eight, and we'll talk about eight in just a while. Okay, so let's jump back into three. Three groups of seven. Three is our overarching number. Three. The number three is significant here for us because three is associated with creation, boom. Three is associated uh, with uh, creation, right? So if the major arcana in the tarot uh, signify um, the help of the divine, the divine intervention in your life, then it is about the three major components of life and how life should like kind of transpire. Um, let's talk about it. So in it, there is a, a theory of maiden, mother, crone, another three, right? So uh, we know that three is going to be significant. We've got... Um, you know, Godhead, three in one. We've got, you know, um, spirit, if you believe in this, son and uh, the father, right? Or you've got mother, father, son, offspring, right? So we know with three, you can create. So if we know that in the major arcana, in the Tarot, if the major arcana are split up into three sections of seven, then out of those seven, you a person, you should be ascending or you should be mastering seven, right? You should be perfecting these seven different elements of life, the full card, taking that risk, that leap, um, trusting in the universe, uh, beginner's luck, uh, the divine um, giving you, um, you know, pushing you, propelling you to start something new, okay? And then the magician taking all that you have, alchemizing things, making it work for you yourself, right? So it's about perfection in each different category. Now, we'll give a name to each category because it'll also make a little bit more sense here. So for the middle category, if I can get the text box to work, we have, uh, okay, for the middle cat category, we can say, we can call this spirit or consciousness. Um, I typically butcher this word, so yeah, 
conscious. I know all my scholars out there, you know, they you know, they have their yelling at the laptop or the phone, the CEO. Thank you. All right, so our middle, uh, our middle major arcana is spirit consciousness, right? All right, so then we have, um, we'll just move this down. So since we know that we have three groups of seven, we'll just down over here. All right, and so then we'll, we'll jump over here and we'll put um, for this, uh, for our uh, first group of seven, the full to the chariot, we'll uh, deem it as uh, justice or masculinity. Hey, that might be butchered also, but I think we get it, right? It'll be, uh, it'll be justice or masculinity. And we'll just move that down. And you know what we're gonna do so that we can di differentiate a little bit, we'll bold it out. All right, so, all right, let's see. And then we have our third, uh, we'll have our third um, group and we will deem that as, yeah, anybody picking on here, we'll deem it as a strength or mercy or femininity. Well, now this is another one right here. Um, uh, grade school education showing them. <laughs> All right, so there we are. So we've got uh, three again coming up, of course, uh, justice, fear, uh, spirit, and then mercy or femininity. That is so butchered. I, I know I, I got to fix it. Um, so this is going to help you read in terms of, let's say if you were reading for yourself or, or whatnot, it's about, okay, so you're going to couple these or group these, right? So if you know that you, let's say uh, you, you pull the fool car, you pull the empress, and then you pull the chariot, you know that this is about um, you more so making decisions. Uh, from the headspace, from masculinity, from what from what works, logic, rationale. Okay, you know that it's going to be about you being in control of your mind and your emotions, especially if you pull the full card. What do we say? Uh, the Empress in the Chariot. Okay, the Empress is about again a three open abundance and giving. But you also need to, the chariot card, you need to control, you need to stay in control, balance. Um, you need to master something or overcome, okay? Uh, so, so that will help you in terms of when you're kind of reading for yourself, it'll kind of make sense for you. Um, I hope that it does. Okay, um, but, but then let's jump into the invisible. So what we get is, let's see if I can draw some, okay. All right, so what we get are that all of these are tied into one another. And it kind of makes, you know, um, kind of a lopsided triangle. And we know that a triangle has, what, three sides, um, two are equal. Um, at most, uh, um, Sosceles triangle, okay? Uh, two sides are equal and one is not, right? Uh, but we know that, again, we get the number three. So we get um, openness, we get abundance, we get, um, our, um, we get clarity, we get creation again. It's like the universe is telling you in order to master yourself seven, in, in, in to create three, you need to firstly perfect your masculinity and your feminine side, okay? Your masculine and your feminine need to be in balance, in check. The only way you get that is by having spiritual awareness or higher level of consciousness, spirit, spiritual consciousness, okay? Um, in terms of, if you're going to look at this, 
in terms of trying to fix you, fix your life, okay? Because some of us are operating a little too much, you know, well, some of us are operating a little too much um, on this side. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. So let's go ahead and delete that. I don't know where that came from. Well, I do know where it came from, but that's not what I wanted to do. All right, let's see. So some of us are operating a little too much in our femininity, in our feminine side. Um, we're too um, emotional. We're too open. We're too giving. We want to create. We want to nurture. We want to maybe even it can turn into smother. You maybe, you know, you just put an S in front of mother and, and it's smothered. So some of you are operating too much into in your femininity. And of course, some of us could be operating a little bit too much in our um, masculinity where, you know, um, everything is, um, you know, it's about um, what is fair. You know, you're not having any mercy. You're not really tapping into your feminine side and you're not really... Um, it's happening to your feelings. It's all about the thoughts and how you can rationalize. It's all about the bottom line. So you you may be like a hard task master in your mind. Um, so it's about balance here. And it's about which side to pull from in every situation. It's also about sometimes taking the middle ground, um, going to that higher level of consciousness, awareness, spirit, okay? Also, I want to talk about sometimes um, with these major arcana being broken down into seven. Some of us are going to be born into our own awareness. Some of us are going to be born into the awareness of masculinity. So some of us will be great thinkers, will be great institution, will be able to you know, uh, bring it to fruition, we'll be able to institute, we'll be able to take something from nothing and make it great. Well, you know, that's where, um, where some of us will be, we'll be more in our masculinity versus our femininity, we'll know who we are, we'll be thinkers, okay? Um, you know some of those people, you might even be one of those people. When you are born into your feminine side, you're more in your feelings, in the lower vibration of this, you could even be um, kind of codependent, you know, because the the adverse of codependence would be masculinity where you're super independent. Nobody can touch you. Nobody matters but you. It could even be a high level of um, narcissism or uh, selfishness, you know, um, so so you, you want to keep that in mind too. So you get to kind of Figure out where you are on the spectrum. Do you operate too much in your feminine or do you operate in your masculine? And then you also want to, you want to, everybody wants to get here to a place of, this is like more spiritual, you know, you're able to mitigate all the circumstances, the unforeseen circumstances of life you're able to cope with. Because even with the, with a hermit being here, you know, in the middle, um, you're able to, there's like a transition of your personality that happens when you get to this very spiritual place here in the middle. Now we can even um, tie in some of the signs here. So I told you everything is in threes, right? So three is going to be our overarching number. So if we want to talk about the signs here. Um, so we know that The fool, magician, uh, high priestess, emperor, empress, lovers, chariot, they're the first seven. So we're going to talk about here the first. And the first are the cardinal signs, right? Um, and, and those are <laughs> uh, Capricorn, butchering all of this, Capricorn. Uh, we've got Aries. Aries. Then we have, um, why can't I think? We have Libra. 
and then we have cancer. Okay, so we with these signs, we got people who let's say these were one of their sun signs. They're going to be more so about the start, the in, initializing, right? And we talked about that with masculine energy, the institution bringing something into fruition, right? Um, and it's and of course there's variables to this. Of course, we have sun, moon rising, and we got so many different. Um, signs in our uh, different houses okay so you know that's that but um for the for the most part we can kind of um attribute this to the cardinal signs and, and it could be moved around too so and then let's go ahead and move this one again over here and so then we, we have um not i don't want a sticky note okay so then we have um what will be deemed as the um just had a brain fart. I know you're out there screaming at, at the screen. Um, fix signs. All right, and our fix signs. Okay, so our fix signs are uh, Aquarius, um, Scorpio, Taurus, and Leo. Okay, so with, the, with these fix signs, you get these are the people who, well, think about if this was a race, right? Um, so you get the person, you get the people starting over here, they're going to run, and then they're going to hand the baton off to the people in the middle. So these are the people who hold it together, right? The fixed sign. Um, if you are a fixed sign, you'll see that um, maybe you hold it together and you can endure a lot. And you may even endure a lot in your life because you are... Uh, a fixed sign. The fixed signs are, they can go through a lot of adversity because they're made for that. You're made for the middle. You know, anything can happen in the middle, right? You can win, you can lose, you can draw, you can die, you can, you can anything can happen. You're made for the adversity. Okay. And um, you're made for the adversity because you're pretty much fixed. You can hold it together. The cardinal signs are about initiating and starting. And then the fixed signs are about, you know, um, we want to get to the last leg over here. So the fixed signs are strong, okay? And uh, I'll, I'll do a, another series or video on that. All right, so then um, we've got uh, over here, we've got our mutable signs. Boom, 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 boom. That could be spelled wrong also. Mutable, it could be right now. Um, okay. Mutable signs, and we've got Sagittarius. Okay, guys, having a day that could be wrong too. Okay, and we've got Virgo, and then we have uh, Gemini, and then we have Pisces. Okay, so. Um, with the mutable signs, they're the end, right? I think it was two, three, four. I'm not going to be bothered with it right now. We'll go back and we'll perfect it later. All right. So with the mutable signs, we have Sagittarius, Virgo, Gemini, Pisces. So we've got mutating energy. When something mutates, it's turning, right? It's forming into we don't know um that's where you get the world you get malkuf you get things kind of dissipating um the world is directly associated with the empress because it, it reduces to a three empress is a three um back to creation you get to create something else so we ran the race right or the race of life okay and we we ran through all of these major arcana, and now we get to the world, okay? We get to the world, or we get to the finish, to the end, and we get to, I didn't want to bold everything, but um, I only wanted that one. Okay, so we get to the world, and we get to, um, we get to the end. We get to mutate. We get to turn this into something else. We get to go back to the full but this will be a different chapter, right? This will be something else. Maybe you're going from, let's see, maybe you're going from 
Maiden, why am I? Not? Okay, maybe you're going from, I just want to click in here. All right, so maybe you're going from Maiden, all right, to Mother. Or you maybe you're going from Mother to Chrome. So at the end of each phase or, sta or stage or um, cycle in your life, um, you should be creating something else, the world card directly related to three, which is empress, which is abundance and creation. So you should be creating something else. You, be, you should be going to something else. So when you see the world, when you see uh, the world and the devil together, maybe in a spread, you get kind of formulate in your mind that there, there's a lesson learned here. It's time to let something malkuf, we'll talk about that, mutate change into something else it's time to let it go it's time to um do something different okay um we'll also talk about the invisible the invisible eight because we've got seven here we got seven here we got seven here but we know at, after seven is eight that invisible eight eight is karma or karmic karma could be good or bad right we got an invisible eight in between these spaces. So from one major arcana to the next, you've got a cycle or karma. What was created back here if you're moving to this new level here? Have you broken the chain of, have you released, have you learned? Because we know that eights are about cycles, it's about karma, um, it's about a new start of something, okay? It's about, uh, again, learning how to release and let go. And I think for people in general, it's the hardest thing to release and let go. You kind of get stuck, you get stuck on one, one aspect of life, never really transforming or transpiring or mutating into the next, okay? Um, so, so let's talk about a few other things. So. Some of you who get stuck, you may see seven, seven, you may see seven, 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 seven. So you'll see four sevens. I was telling you, look, you're stuck somewhere, okay? You need to kind of master something about yourself, okay? Um, and then you might see three, 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 about creation. It's about a time of what are you creating? Your thoughts, your mind, you should have a clear conscience, right? Um, clear heart and clear mind, clear heart, feelings, clear mind, thoughts, clear conscience. What are you creating, okay? Um, and then um, you may be seeing 888. It's telling you that you, you, might, you, you might be going into a new cycle. You need to let something new develop or re release the tie of that old karmic situation or something is karmic or it could be good or bad or you're, you're coming into a new cycle of karma. It could be good or bad or you need to re release something that is karmic. And, you know, you can pull more cards, you can ask questions or you can pray and you can try to figure out where you are in life. But, you know, uh, the, the tarot runes, anything that you use to commune with the divine or just that divination tools to help you ascend, be better, go higher, have clear conscience. It is not to help you learn about what Jack is doing down the street with, with Sally. I mean, come on, you already know. So let's try to move into a place of um, looking at the divination tools for something much greater, for um, spiritual ascension. You may say, I don't want to uh, ascend spiritually. I just want my twin flame back, or I want my soulmate back, or I want my jack back, right? But this may be how you get them back. You have to ascend. That would be a question you need to ask your God. You know, that's that's a question between you and who you serve. And hopefully there's somebody in your life or there's something in your life that you serve other than you. For there's nothing in self that satisfies. Self-satisfying is a myth it is a lie so to you know so so um or to be self-centered you know but anyhow um I digress we won't go there 
But I hope that this helps you kind of put some things into perspective in terms of learning the tarot, reading for yourself or reading for others, going into your ascension process. I'll do more little videos like this. Um, if you have questions for me, you can always email me uh, tarotofl at gmail.com. I can answer questions uh, for you about this, not about your personal life. And you can't ask me if somebody's cheated on you or if you'll get a job or anything like that. I, I don't answer questions like that. So, and I, I'm not going to pull any cards for you, but if you have questions in regards to, you know, furthering the conversation that we just had here about uh, the Tarot and numerology, then yes, please email me. All right. Uh, thank you. Many blessings to all of you. Take care.